Caesar salad has to be one of the most common salads in the world, and yet almost every single freaking time, it's messed up. So we're gonna fix that, and then at the end, I have a little surprise for you. Okay, so today we're talking about the Caesar salad. Look, when I say that it's messed up commonly, what I'm talking about is not just the leaves and the croutons and that stuff. I mean, granted, the crappy pre-made croutons that a lot of restaurants use make me want to smash my head into a wall. It's just not right. But more importantly, the dressing. The frickin' dressing. It's extremely easy, you can definitely do it, and then once we've made it, we're gonna make a nice little mystery sandwich. Anyway, with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Listen, Caesar salad is an art form. It's simple, but it has a few rules if you want it to be utter perfection. This is your arsenal against shitty tasting dressing. There's nothing worse, and none of these ingredients are to change at any point in time, and neither should this process. If you do, papa no like, and papa maybe also no keys. All right, so first thing, we're gonna make the entire backbone of this recipe, the dressing. You're gonna need six fatty cloves of garlic. Smash them all with the flat side of your knife, like nicely. Sprinkle them generously with kosher salt. The salt helps break down the garlic and pull out its liquid. Now listen carefully. Begin a rolling chop like this and just keep chopping and gathering, chopping and gathering, smearing your knife on occasion to break its cell walls even further. And you're gonna continue this process for about three to five minutes or until you get a relatively fine paste that holds together when smearing like this. Now you're gonna get yourself three anchovy fillets that were packed in olive oil. Finally chop those as well until they're as fine as possible. You could probably go finer, but you want a paste. Then chop both your garlic paste and your anchovy paste together until it's ultra fine and creates a nice but kind of ugly looking paste. Trust me, this is the most important thing. Add your garlic anchovy paste to a medium sized bowl and to that you're gonna add two large egg yolks, the juice of one and a half large lemons, and one heaping tablespoon or 18 grams of Dijon mustard. Season that generously with kosher salt, whisk all that together until thoroughly combined, and then while constantly whisking, slowly begin adding one and a quarter cup or 300 milliliters of vegetable oil. Look, it's just like a mayo. Literally one drop at a time at first till it starts to get a little creamy and emulsified, then increase to a nice even but slow stream. Keep on whisking, and adding your oil, and I repeat, do not stop whisking. You should notice that the dressing is getting thicker and creamier as you go, and you're gonna add all of this oil. Now, if it's not thick enough by the time you've added all of it, you can add another quarter cup of oil. Then once it's done, you're gonna add three quarters of a cup or 70 grams of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Whisk that in. Oh, and uh, don't forget to drop your whisk too. It really helps develop the full flavor. Okay, so we have our lovely dressing, but now we need to talk crouton. If you go to the store, Papa, huh, you don't even want to know what Papa will do if you buy pre-made croutons. Get yourself a nice loaf of ciabatta, cut that through the middle into two pieces, and then in half lengthwise like a sandwich. Now cut each half into one inch wide batons. Now at this point, you of course can brush these with a little bit of olive oil, but I actually use my garlic bread recipe, which the link for that will be in the description. Spread a generous amount of your garlic bread butter over each piece, then place those on a baking sheet lined with foil, and toss it into an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes or until golden brown and beautiful. Beautiful. Look, I don't want them completely dry like little explosive crunchies. I want a little bit of moist chew in the middle. Yes, moist. Now, using a sharp knife, cut along your batons to get individual little crouton failures, and those are, well, your croutons. Garlic bread croutons, that is. All right, we have our two most important pieces. Now, for the greenery, I like to use Boston or bib lettuce and romaine. Romaine provides the refreshing crunch, while the Boston or bib brings some tenderness and light sweetness. It's a good thing. Now, break off all the leaves and toss those two heads together nicely in a large bowl, and then to plate up, add your leaves, which I hope you wash properly, to a salad bowl or plate, then arrange on your croutons, and if you want to have a fancy little table service moment, drizzle on your dressing all of your salad to your liking. Now, while that's great for B-roll, let me show you how to properly dress a salad. It's very simple. Get your greens in a bowl, immediately season your leaves to taste with salt. This is a crucial salad dressing secret for all salads. Then add your desired amount of dressing, ideally around the edges of the bowl rather than directly on the greens. Then using your hands or tongs, vigorously but gently toss the salad, haha, <laughs> toss the salad, to coat each and every leaf. Give it a small taste, and if it needs any more salt or acid, you can adjust those levels from there, and that's a properly dressed salad. You understand? Now we have our finished beautiful salad. I think it's it's time that we taste test. I got two forks and I don't know why, but I'm gonna catch both of them. Yeah! So anyway, this is an original, ultra traditional Caesar salad. Oh yeah, a little crouton. First off, make your own croutons. It's always gonna come out on top. Second off, the dressing, 
perfection. Finito. This is how you make an appropriate Caesar dressing. None of that weird stuff. It's all done by hand. You break up the allicin in the garlic and make it real tasty and gemmy. I'm not gonna be long-winded about it, but this is the only way you should ever make a Caesar dressing for the rest of your life, and it will change your salad game. Permanently. But if there's one other thing I wanna change permanently, it's the sandwich game, which we're gonna do right now. Yeah. Okay, I got another thing for you. Maybe you don't want a salad. Maybe you want a big, beefy Caesar sandwich that makes angels <laughs> cry tears of joy. First, we need one sweet onion. That's not why they're crying, by the way. They're crying because it's, it's good, not because of the onion. Slice that into half-inch slices, leaving it in a single round. Remove the peel, but don't separate it into rings. Now, heat a medium skillet over medium high. Add about three tablespoons of vegetable oil or enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Then once ripping hot, add in your onion, sear on that side for about three minutes. You can use a press like the chef press to keep them flat until deeply brulee then give them a flip. It's okay if they fall a little bit apart. Sometimes that happens. Season to taste with salt and repeat on the other side. And look, if you want to get a little fancy with the brulee onions, obviously you can leave them like this and that's just fine. But you know, for some reason, I don't know why, I decided to get some bourbon, pour a splash in there and ignite it because it looks cool and it's jemmy. You know, you get a little bit of a onion bourbon syrup that coats it and turns it from onion to onion. Once the other side is done, you have your beautiful brulee onions. Now for the steak, we've got a lovely Texas Wagyu ribeye. Shout out to the homies from Miguel for sending this guy my way, Papa Geese. Simply heat up a medium largest skillet over medium high heat, add just enough vegetable oil to cover the surface of the pan. Now while that's heating, pat your steak completely dry with paper towels, season it very generously with salt and black pepper, pressing in that seasoning nicely. Of course, both sides, always. Now once that pan is hot, add in your steak and press to adhere. Sear that for about two to three minutes or until deeply brown. Give her a little flip and optionally toss in a small bunch of thyme, a couple tablespoons of unsalted butter, and baste constantly with butter until it reaches a beautiful medium rare. Then immediately pull your steak out of the pan, let it rest on a cutting board for about five minutes. Okay, we're almost there, but before we assemble, let's get the rest of our mise en place. Get two slices of nice quality bread like the sourdough, toast it in butter in a pan, you know, like grilled cheese style until it's nice and toasty. Slice one large tomato, a quarter of an inch thick, and more importantly, salt your tomatoes. Anytime you make a sandwich, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Now, once your steak is rested, it's time to slice. Separate the rib cap from the eye, because it's a ribeye. See how those names start to make a little sense? Then just slice your steak as thick or as thin as you want. I like it a little bit on the thinner side, but not too thin. You know, I don't want it like paper thin. Now to assemble, get your bread, add some dressing on both sides, spread it around nicely, then lay down your lovely tomatoes on the bottom slice. Then some of those same salad greens that have been seasoned and dressed with more Caesar dressing, your beautiful sliced steak more dressed lettuce, and of course your brulee sweet onions, as much or as little as you like. And finally, crown your king with the beautifully toasted and dressed other half. I'm, my mouth is watering right now just looking at this. Mmm. Papa like. Slice it in half, then enjoy a cross section nearly unfit for mere mortals to gaze upon. And of course, hop on a train with a one-way ticket to Flavortown. This freaking sandwich, dude. I love sandwiches with Caesar dressing. Imagine the perfect sandwich, whatever that is to you. You're eating, you're enjoying it, feels good, maybe the nips go doink doink, but something in there is elevating it. What is that? It's so jummy. What could it possibly, oh yeah, it's Caesar dressing, proper Caesar dressing, and a little bit of Caesar salad on there too. The toast is the crunchy crouton. It's basically a salad in the form of a sandwich. The point is, whatever format salad you want to enjoy, whether it's in a nice little bowl with your little dressing and croutons and cheese, or a big baddie sandwich, it's all up to you, all right? There's nothing that I'm trying to force you to do except, well, make the dressing properly, but you know what? I don't care. I, it's my dressing and that's how I make it, and if you don't, then papa, no keys. You wanna know what else is full of creamy, salty goodness and oozes meat juices into your mouth? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our Caesar salad. It came out perfectly. It was splendid. The little garlic bread croutons, you don't even have to go that hard. You could just toss in a little oil and toast them. That's fine, delicious either way. But more importantly, that Caesar dressing, when you get that right, that perfect balance of saltiness, acidity, umami, bow, bow, bow. It's just, it feels so good, so righteous, and you wanna put it on everything, which is exactly why I made the fancy steak salad with a little bit of Caesar salad in it. Wait, did I say steak salad? Steak sandwich? The sandwich. Did I say salad? The point is, I hope this was helpful for you because I want to see more proper Caesar salads and I promise when you taste this it will change your life in the perspective of salad. Anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Papa love you so, so much.